Greetings, you mighty earth-shaking, history-making, mountain-moving, giant-killing, demon-stomping, water-walking champion man. God's lifting you up. Hallelujah. I'm Pastor Glenn. Now listen, we're talking about thinking big in small places because I know God wants the rest of your life to be the best of your life. And I know that because Jesus flat out said in John 10:10, 10, 10, the reason I've come to earth is so that you can have life and have it more abundantly. And also because uh, Job 8, 7 says, though your beginning is small, meaning that you don't like where you're at in, in your life, though your beginning is small, yet your latter end is going to greatly increase, shall greatly increase, is what it said, Job 8, 7. And another memory verse for you, I'm sure you already know that, I'm sure you're saying increase cometh every day because you want to get out of your small place. There's something you got to do. If you fold your hands and do nothing, just listen. Oh, that was a good message. No, you got to. The, the reason that God's even attracted you to, to hear this is because he wants to help you because he God has faith in you that you're going to do the word of God. You're going to apply the principles. You're going to think on the things that are lovely and pure and of good report and virtuous and praiseworthy and beneficial to you. Psalm 115, 14 and 15. The Lord shall increase you more and more, you and your children. You are blessed of the Lord that made heaven and earth. Okay, so I want you to memorize Job 8, 7 and Psalm 115, 14. The Lord shall increase you more and more. We're talking about increase. That's why we're saying increase cometh. We're not just saying increase is coming to me. That's like a normal people would talk. We're, we're now talking God talk. Increase cometh. That means in the ever continuous present tense, it's coming today. It's already been coming and it's going to come in the future. Okay. That's how we're going to see it in Jesus name. All right. There's two shells there. The Lord shall increase you more and more, you and your children. And you shall be blessed of the Lord that made heaven and earth. And the, uh, though your beginning is small, your latter end shall greatly increase. All right, this is thinking big in small places. Lesson number eight, we saw in lesson number seven, I think it was, that 12 pastor spies brought an evil report about their inability to have what God said they could have. It's the same today. I'm saying that the purpose of the promise is its fulfillment. Write that down. The purpose of the promise is its fulfillment. We saw that in 2 Peter 1, verse 2 through 4. Remember that? And there's another verse in Corinthians, and I don't know where it is, but it says, all the promises of God in Jesus Christ are yes and amen. So we go with what the Bible says, not what our experience or people who are unbelieving pastor spy guys, okay? They represent the people but they don't really represent God. We want God. All right. They couldn't take the, the promised land because there was walled cities and there was giants in the promised land. Uh, and furthermore, they told the, the multitude, the, the 10 unbelieving pastor spy guys, that uh, they said the promised land, uh, that we are mere grasshoppers in the sight of the giants. And so are we in our own sight. Now, there's no way that they could have uh, known what a giant uh, saw. They, but they told the people, there's no way we can o overcome the giants. And that would be Numbers 13, 17 through 14, 39 or 40, something like that. Okay. So review these facts. The children of Israel or anybody else in the, on earth, in the universe can't see through somebody else's eyes. So to say we look like grasshoppers to the giants was unscientific. It was a fearful statement. It couldn't be true. I know what you're thinking. No, you don't. You, you, you have a bad self image and you think somebody thinking that you're your ears are too big or too small. You're too skinny or too fat, whatever. And you think you know what other people are thinking. You do not. Consider this. We're, grasshop we're, we're grasshoppers in the sight of the giants. They're so big. If a man is five feet tall, I'm six feet like three. If a man is five feet tall, that means he's 60 inches tall because 60 inches equal five feet. 
Usually a grasshopper is about an inch tall. That means a man is 60 times taller than a grasshopper. You see that, right? Now, apply the same formula to the giants and the children of Israel. The report was, we are grasshoppers compared to the giants. That would mean that the giants were 60 times taller than a man. If a man's five feet and the giants 60 times taller, that means the giants we saw was, were 300 feet tall. Wow. Let me say that again. Wow. The fearful evil report that the 10 pastor spies painted was a picture of 300 foot tall giants in the promised land. Now I'm going to take a risk and say no giant that ever lived was anywhere near 300 feet tall. I'm going to say that. But I'll say this, fear always exaggerates the problem. And I'm going to say this, hey, maybe fear is exaggerating your problem. And it can be solved if you just put the word of God in you in the area that you need help. And stick with it day after day, confessing the word, personalizing the word, internalizing the word. You can overcome. The 10 spies also said, now get a load of this. All the people we saw in the land were men of great stature. They were giants. Numbers 13, 20, 13, 32, I think it is. Okay. That statement is also a lie because the children of Israel that were present that day, the little kids, grew up and went in and possessed the land, starting with the first city, which was Jericho. Was there any giants in Jericho? Was Rahab the harlot 300 feet tall? They said all the people we saw. And the first city they came to was Jericho. Rahab the harlot, who's in the bloodline of Jesus. So that tells you God can change some people's lives around, right? She told Joshua's men that everyone in the promised land was afraid of the children of Israel. Rahab chopped those 10 pastor spies low by saying, liar, liar, pants on fire. Not everyone's a giant. And not only that, you're afraid of us. We've been afraid of you. Liar, liar, pants on fire, hanging on the telephone wire, we used to say as kids when I was small. No, that's, that's not what Rahab said. She said, I know that the Lord has given you the land. King James says, half. Hath or has is past tense. God already gave it to the children of Israel when they were still in slaves' bondage in Egypt. God gave it to them. They, however, didn't possess it because of fear. Rahab continued and said, And the terror of you is fallen upon all of us and all the inhabitants of the land, now that would include the small percentage, not everyone that's a giant, not because giants, not everyone was a giant, but the small percentage that were giants faint because of you. As soon as we heard of you, our hearts did melt, neither did there remain any more courage in any one of us because of you, Joshua 2, 9, and, 9 through 9, 10, and 11, okay? The children of Israel were afraid of people who were literally terrified of them, terrified of them. Fear wants you to run from something that's not change, chasing you. Fear wants you to run from something that's not chasing you. The bottom line is the children of the adults in Numbers 13 and 14 went in, possessed the promised land. That fact proves that it wasn't the walled cities. It wasn't the Hittites. It wasn't the Canaanites. It wasn't the Jebusites. It wasn't the Giantites. It was the Fearites that caused that, their poor self-image, that caused a few million people to miss out on huge blessings because they believed a bad report. Millions of Christians are missing out on huge blessings today, and I don't want that to be you. Remember what we said from uh, 2 Peter 1, verse, two, three, verse 3 and 4. It says that God has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge. And that's what you're getting, knowledge. 
uh, getting to know God better, getting to know how his principles work. And by the exceeding great promises of God, we are partakers of God's divine nature. And so the power of God works in you because of you're learning something, knowledge that you're getting. Get the exceeding great and precious promises of God in your heart and in your mind and start thinking big and small places. I'm Pastor Glenn. Keep on watching. Keep on believing that God is with you. God is for you. Like and subscribe below. Praise God. And keep saying Job 8, 7, though my beginning is small, my latter end is greatly increasing. Thank you, Jesus. Have a great day.